Right, hello guys, welcome back to Model Hobbies. Um, this is the next project, which I'm looking forward to. It's a Trumpeter Fairy Swordfish Mark II, uh, 132 scale. So yeah, it's of a swordfish, um, obviously a Royal Navy torpedo bomber, made in 1933, and I think it was retired in 1945, replaced by the Albacore, and, um, which was another biplane. Torpedo type bomber. I think this helped sink the Bismarck. I think it disabled its rudder or something. And then a fleet of them flew out and disabled it. And then the British um, Navy surrounded it and sunk it. But this is a nice model. Uh, made, obviously made by Trumpeter, which are quite a good model makers. So I expect there to be a lot of parts in this one. And I expect there to be a lot of decals, which should be okay. I'm going to take my time on this one because um, I want this to look nice and it's one of my favourite planes. I really do like the Swordfish. It's not a World War One plane even though it's a biplane. It's just an early World War Two plane. It's actually outdated by the time the war, Second World War came along but yeah. Um, we'll open it up have a look what we've got inside and uh, we'll make a start on it. We've got the two, I'll show you the box first, so a bit, so you can see. So you've got two different uh, squadrons on here, two different paint schemes. I'm going to do the white one because I quite like the look of that um, and that's what I know mostly. It's the Royal Navy, both the Royal Navy, but that's the desert scheme. Um, There we go, some details on it. It's Swordfish of a two torpedo bomber built by the Fairy Aviation Company and used as a fleet arm of the Royal Navy during World War II. It was outdated by 1939 but achieved some spectacular success. Successes during the war, notably the destruction of the Re Re Regia Marina, the Italian Navy, in the Battle of Taranto, and the famous Crippling of the Bismarck. There you go, so it did. And I haven't read this before, by the way, it's the first time I've seen this. It was operated primarily as a fleet attack aircraft, however, during the later years, it was also used as an anti-submarine and uh, training craft. 2,400 sawfields had been built, 692 by ferry and 1,799 in Sherbourne by the Blackburn Aircraft Company. The most numerous version was the Mark II, of which 1,080 were made. So there you go. So we'll open it up and we'll see what we got. All right, yeah, so... Already I can see there are a lot of uh, parts, which is good. Like I say, I'm going to take my time on this one. I'm not rushing it. So here is the glass parts, all nicely wrapped up. I shall put that back in the wrapper, because I like that. The whole body. Uh, I, I think you can do one where you can see the inside of the plane, which I might do. That'd be more, quite nice to do that. Sorry, I didn't show you that properly. There you go. All the parts, the bodywork. Which is nicely detailed. And here is the normal parts. Exactly the same sprue, but just not a see-through pack. The wings. Nice and big. Some more little glass parts. There's the uh, um, dashboard or the instrument panel, should I say? Looks quite nice. I know you've got some photo etch parts in here, so that's going to be fun doing them. I had fun on that Corsair trying to do these, but hopefully these will go a bit better. I think you've got seat belts and other bits here. I'm not too sure now. We'll come across some rubber wheels, which I like. Nicely detailed on the rubber wheels as well, as you can see. This might be the parts that go inside the glass one. I might do the see-through one so you can see the inside of it. It might be quite nice. There's a torpedo. Yeah. 
or little bombs and things. I'll, I'll probably just go with the one big torpedo if that's an option. More bombs. But we'll see. We'll see what we come across. Parts of the wings and the struts and the wheels there. And last but not least, we have the instructions. I'll go through them. I'll just put the parts back in the box so I can keep them nice and tidy. So here are the instructions. Again, you get a nice little coloured image of what it should look like. Which I really like about um, Trumpeta stuff. I don't know if other companies do this, but I really like it. It's a nice detailed picture of what everything should be. So you've got some bombs, so I'm, I'm going to do the white version, so I shall put them on. So that'd be nice. It's got the colours here, which is good. Um, I always use Veluca Air or, hum, or Tamiya, sorry, so that's good that it's got the colours. That's handy. And all the normal instructions, it's all black and white, but like I say, you've got the thing there and you've got all the colours on here as well. Burnt iron, silver, so that's good. So I'm guessing, yeah, you can have the glass one, and you've got all the parts where they see through here, which I think I might do. I don't know though, because I quite like the fact that it's, you know, it'll be coloured, looking normal. I think I'm going to do it normal, because I think that'll look nicer, because then I can spray it nice. And, yeah, I won't use the glass parts the outside. I'll, I'll just use the normal ones. Not much to the engine on this one, not like that Corsair, a little bit to it, but that Corsair had a lot to the engine and it was quite difficult, but this one looks a lot nicer. So all in all, there are 18 steps, which isn't too bad really, so it shouldn't take, well, it will take me whatever it takes me to be honest, because I'm going to take my time on it, I don't want this one to be, look a mess or anything. I really am going to try with this one. So yeah, so what we'll be starting on, obviously, is step number one, which is all the cockpit stuff, and we'll spray it all up as we go, uh, make it look nice, and we'll go from there. So I'll show now. Get on with that. We're going to be starting on the chairs and stuff. Um, I'll give it an undercoat. I'll probably give it a white undercoat or a grey because it's it's all white or grey basically, or wood, and that will make it. Nice and light, bring it up nice. Yeah, I shall start on this. So I thought while I was building this one, I'd give you a little bit more history on the plane itself. Um, there are four types of swordfish. Um, swordfish one, which is the first production, and it was equipped with floats. Um, uh, yeah, the swordfish two, which is the one that I'm building in this video. Um, this one had metal lower wings, so you could mount rockets to the bottom of it. And that, that was introduced in 1943. Then you had a Swordfish 3, which was equipped with a centimetric radar. And then you had a Swordfish 4, which was the last version, which had an enclosed cabin. So the plane obviously being stored mostly on warships and air, uh, aircraft carriers and that, the, the wings could fold up. Um, it also was nicknamed the string bag, um, not because of the amount of like struts and bars and stuff that went across the wings and all that kind of stuff, but because of the amount of equipment that it could carry. I think the crews uh, likened it to the housewife string shopping bag, because it could carry so much. Um, it was mainly used for like nighttime bombing of uh, U-boats and submarines and stuff like that. I think it was quite good at doing that kind of stuff, especially when it had the radar equipped. It could find uh, ships and U-boats and submarines at night. Um, it was also used for reconnaissance as well. So on the 24th of May 1941, uh, nine swordfish took off from the HMS Victorious and attacked the German ship uh, Bismarck. Um, 
I think they were able to find it using the radar and hit it with one torpedo which only caused minor damage. And on the 26th of May there was two attacks against it and the first one um, they failed to locate the ship but uh, on the second attack two torpedoes hit, one which jammed the ship's rudders. Um, this pretty much crippled the Bismarck and it was unmaneuverable and then the Navy came in had the Royal Navy and attacked it and managed to sink it. So the plane, as I said earlier, was supposed to be replaced by the Uferi Albacore, which was also another type of torpedo um, biplane bomber, but it actually outlived that plane um, and was succeeded by a Ferry Barracuda, which was a monoplane torpedo bomber. It flew all the way up until 1945, 21st of May 1945, and then it was disbanded. Um, it was used for training up until about 1946 and that was the last time it was used. Um, the plane was then disbanded and not used anymore and uh, yeah there are a few examples of the plane remaining in this um, just doing basic duties for them. But yeah the plane flew up to about 1946 and, and that was it, it was not used anymore.
Right, so I've got the cockpit in, finally, that took a while, oh, didn't click that bit together, there we go, um, looks quite nice, a lot of detail on this, but it is a Trumpeter model, so they do have a lot of detail, um, the only bit that won't go together properly is this bit at the bottom here, but might be able to, just, I mean I've squeezed it in as hard as I can and glued it, so I shall Put a bit of filler in that as well. These little bits on the guns, you can see them, do not want to stay on, they keep falling off. So I'm going to have to try and leave that alone. It's nice detail inside the cockpit so far. Looks pretty good. Um, so the next bit, I'm going to leave this to dry overnight. So the next bit is going to be putting all the wings on, like these bits here. I'll go in there, slot in there like that. Um, just a few bits to go on to the bottom here, as you can see there. And it's starting to put together all this cockpit uh, part here. If I can talk properly, all this cockpit part here and all the front of it, stuff like that. And um, yeah, but lovely model. I'm liking the look of this. I might give it a spray on the outside before I do this. I'm not too sure yet though. Because I've got to get the engine on and stuff like that, and I've already sprayed the engine, but I could always mask that up. So yeah, I'll let this dry overnight, and then I will come back to it, and we shall make a start and get in the wings or the back wings. Funny colour for that engine, and I mean you can't really see it anyway. You won't see that at all once all the fronts on. So one of those. That's probably why there's not a lot of detail on it, to be honest. Unless you're using the see-through. Um, body work so you can't see none of it really but there's a lot of detail on the inside so I know it's there <laughs> so yeah I'll let it dry I'll come back tomorrow and I shall get on with the wings <laughs> 